So now it's time for me to introduce to you our next speaker and together with that, our next presentation. He has worked for over 15 years in the hardware field and he has been for, some, for as many years at, at the OpenFest. He is a really big hard open, open source software and hardware fan and he is a really big hardware fan as well. So allow me to introduce to you Rodoslav Borisov and his presentation on VLSI. Hello. Uh, good day, everyone, and welcome to my presentation. Thank you all for coming here today, and uh, congratulations to the organizers uh, for their 20th anniversary uh, for the Open Fest. The title of my presentation uh, is a question, and the question is, is the future of VOSI design open source? question came to my mind this summer while watching some YouTube videos, of course, about designing integrated circuits using open source software. I thought that it will be an interesting topic for this conference, but I wasn't aware how big of a question it is until I started working on the presentation. The answer to this question is not trivial, and in the next slides I'll try to explain why. During this process, I'll show some of, the, uh, some of the advancements in the past few years uh, in the field and how you can design your own integrated circuits using open source tools and even fabricate them for free. Very large scale integration is the process of creating an integrated circuit by combining millions or billions of most transistors onto a single uh, chip. And it began in the early 70s when the most integrated circuits uh, were widely adopted and enabled complex semiconductor and telecommunications to be developed. Let me say a few words about my background. I have a master's degree in radio communications uh, and uh, I have been in the field of microelectronics for more than 15 years mostly work on RF, high-speed digital and analog designs. Uh, so this presentation is uh, more about digital, uh, digital design, so it's not my field of expertise, but because the topic is um, important from my point of view, decided to do the presentation. Uh, uh, and it's related also to the open source softwares and uh, yeah. Before we start, uh, we should be aware of the whole process. In, the, in order to fabricate something, we need a factory. Uh, we need some design idea. We need a software and uh, equipment, test equipment and, or some software or both to uh, to analyze uh, the fabricated device at the end of the process. So uh, let's have a look how the FAPs are working. Foundries are called the companies that res are responsible for the manufacturing of your design. The foundries can have multiple FAPs uh, or factories and uh, uh, they can be spread uh, on different locations or uh, focused on one place in the world. So FAPs provide the so-called PDKs, uh, process design kits, which should describe truly their process and designer use them to create their designs. The biggest foundries in the world are TSMC, Intel, Samsung, UMC, Global Foundries, SMIC, ST Microelectronics. Uh, so there's plenty of options for fabrication, but still it's expensive process. The FAPs look like uh, the one in the photo, uh, and uh, the expensive and the expenses come from the required maintenance for 24/7. There's no way of stopping the production, and the reason is very trivial. Uh, the dust particles uh, in the air can contaminate uh, the, the process and the production 
uh, of the integrated circuits. So constantly there is uh, a lot of energy put to keep the place very clean. So everything happens in a very clean environment. Having said that, the machines used for the manufacturing process are also very expensive, sensitive to the environment, and some of them require toxic gases. So it's expensive thing. The fabrication process starts by uh, creating a, a wafer, and wafers are uh, uh, start from a single crystal which is grown to uh, a size usually nowadays it's 12 inch uh, which is around 30 centimeters and then are sliced into pieces with uh, thickness around uh, below one millimeter this is the substrate on which the uh, your device will be fabricated and uh, it's the substrate, basically. Uh, the second step is the mask manufacturing. After signing NDA and paying for fabrication, you submit your design as a GDS file or WASIS file. That's how the files are called. They are similar to Gerber files if you have manufactured PCBs. This is your pattern. I mean, they are not similar in terms of uh, uh, how the files are handled, but uh, the different they also use layers. So this is the similarity. Uh, so this is the design that you want to fabricate on a silicon. The fab takes this uh, information process checks if everything is manufacturable and creates the masks. For the latest processes, a set of masks can cost more than a million dollars and uh, probably uh, half of the price is just uh, the fabrication of the masks. In order to reduce the cost for the technologies, uh, a lot of effort is put to reduce the number of masks. For example, for a simple CMOS process, the mask can vary from 12 to 30 masks uh, for fabrication. Another thing is uh, what FAPs are doing is uh, uh, making so-called multi-project wafers, where you can uh, share the price, uh, you can put uh, uh, different designs from different companies on a single uh, chip, and uh, later on they're uh, given to the companies, but with wiped out uh, designs from different companies. So. Splitting the cost for the masks uh, is uh, split between the, all the companies which share the design. Oh, what happened? Sorry. Oh. I clicked something. So. Uh, all right. Um, so once we have the, the masks, uh, the process of uh, manufacturing uh, starts with the front end of line when the transistors are laid out. This is the wafer, how it looks like with the pattern. And the uh, usual process are oxidation, diffusion, ion implantation, lithography, etching, deposition, chemical, mechanical, polishing, and so on. And at the end, you get the transistors, uh, which are not interconnected. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, during the whole process, uh, wafer tests are, uh, uh, are done, and they are checked that all the process uh, is going uh, properly. The next step is uh, the back end of line, where uh, the metal layers and the interconnection between the transistors are uh, are done. And uh, at the end, once all the metals are applied, this is the stack of the process, which uh, is uh, 
taken up front. When you start your design, you have to figure out how many metal layers you need for the interconnections. These are so-called trucks. Uh, after the back end of line, uh, uh, after finishing the back end of line, usually you have to mount the chip to a PCB and um, the normal process is using uh, some package uh, and the packages that are uh, uh, used, they're usually QFN, MSOP and even wafer level scale packages. Uh, so, people can have multiple options for their package. Uh, these, are, uh, these are the steps uh, which people, uh, the, the FAPs are doing to manufacture the, the chip and uh, basically uh, I'm not sure if we have enough time to explain the process, but uh, a light is shining through the mask or the this on the left hand side is the reticle or the the photo mask and the extreme UV light is used as a source uh, around 993 nanometer, which defines uh, useful area of around 26 by 33 millimeters. This is the maximum design that you can submit to the foundry. It's a limitation of the, of the light and uh, the whole setup. So around 858 square millimeters you have uh, where you can put multiple designs and uh, and uh, get some output. Because of this, uh, we know that the wafer is 30 centimeters and we have useful area around uh, 26 by 33. Uh, there is a stepper which moves uh, the wafer around and uh, the same pattern is applied multiple times on the wafer. So you get at the end uh, uh, your design manufactured. What is so, uh, what made the CMOS technology so successful is uh, these two types of um, building blocks, the N and P type metal oxide transistors. Uh, Used together, they are able to provide almost zero current or very low power dissipation while they are in defined state, on or off. This means that they are going to draw current only while switching and uh, during the other time uh, they won't uh, consume any power. Uh, there are regions on the... This is a cross-section basically of the... Uh, of the process. Uh, the substrate is of P-type and uh, the NMOS transistors and the PMOS transistors, they are lateral transistors. It means that the current flows in the horizontal direction, which makes uh, the process scalable. For example, if you get a uh, 130 nanometer gate, it means that the length or the distance between the drain and the source uh, under the gate is uh, around 130 nanometers uh, in, in length. But if you change the optics or the process, actually the foundry makes these changes, uh, and this is reduced to 90 nanometers, so you scale the the length and reduce the the length of the transistor. Uh, there are multiple benefits coming from this uh, single step. You are reducing the time uh, between the uh, the current to flow, which increases the 
the speed of the device and also you are reducing the the power consumption because the parasitics and the capacitances are reduced, required to charge uh, the transistor. This is very significant because uh, all the technologies nowadays uh, are trying to improve uh, these parameters and uh, uh, basically uh, this process make, uh, made actually the growth in the industry and uh, that's why we are able nowadays to have uh, these uh, smartphones uh, and with uh, so less uh, power consumption. So this information about the process uh, uh, usually in the software world is called PVT, it's process, voltage and temperature and uh, the process variation uh, is uh, the one which is uh, basically uh, showing the performance of the transistors when the light or uh, some process has varied uh, in, the, in the FAP. So there's no ideal circuits <laughs> in the world. So uh, usually the models uh, of, the tra of the transistor are defined using uh, typical, typical, slow, fast, fast, slow, fast, fast, and of course, slow, slow, which is not there. Uh, and uh, uh, there are so many uh, variables in the in the process and the measurements uh, which have to be taken, measured and uh, put in the PDK in order uh, the final design to be successful. It's important because it's uh, also expensive uh, thing. All right, process uh, development kit or design kit uh, consists of design manual and standard libraries, device models, DRC rules, layout versus schematic, and in addition you can have place and route, parasitic extraction, EMIR, ERC, and there are plenty of more uh, such abbreviations which uh, people can uh, uh, have uh, during this process. Alright, the design idea usually uh, it can be a good idea, can be bad idea, but uh, we can split the design into several different categories. Digital design, analog design, mixed signal design and RF design. Depending on the design idea, there are different flows. Usually for digital design, uh, the input files are very low or VHDL files, which uh, are used as an input, and uh, the, the output is a GDS file, which uh, contains uh, all the transistors and logic laid out in the file. Analog design, mixed signal, and tariff designs usually rely on a schematics as an input when you start the design. So let me say a few words about the, the software part. In 2018, uh, a conference uh, took place in Paris. Uh, I actually heard about it in two. 2019, and uh, it's called Free Silicon Conference, and uh, they were uh, their aim is to uh, their they are non-profit organization with the scope to promote free open source uh, CAD tools for designing integrated circuit sharing and uh, sharing of hardware designs and libraries common standard libraries and the freedom user in the context of silicon integrated circuits. So they want a similar thing to open source software to be realized in a hardware manner. 
uh, the problem was that there, there was no any open PDK which you can uh, use to generate your design and manufacture it after that. And it's a big problem because you spent a lot of time trying to optimize uh, things and at the end you can't fabricate uh, and check if, you, if your assumptions are correct. Uh, there were open PDKs which were based on models, but uh, in order to fabricate anything, you have to go to the uh, to the foundries, uh, take their PDK, and redo the work again with their uh, proprietary uh, PDK. And in the PDK, before you get the PDK, you have to sign an NDA. Uh, which says you are not allowed to share any IPs or information uh, uh, related to the transistors. Basically, it stops you from sharing any designs. And suddenly what happened in 2020, Skywater decided with Google to uh, create an open PDK for their uh, uh, they use an old process for this step and uh, I've searched the first commit uh, was on 7th of May in 2020 on GitHub. It's a very significant step and after uh, uh, sharing the manufacturing information and their PDK, uh, suddenly the whole community <laughs> grow, uh, started uh, to be very uh, excited. And uh, these are the documentations from Skywater PDK. And uh, we can actually take a look how uh, this doc documentation looks like. Uh, I'll just switch to a different uh, different display so I'll just mirror my display is it working all right uh, sorry for that oh Oh, uh, yeah. I wasn't realizing that uh, the other monitor will be so far away. So <laughs> uh, I just need to switch here. All right. Uh, and yeah, this is how the PDK looks like uh, for Skywater. You can get information about the masks. So you have five levels of metals, you have inductors, polyresistors, uh, information about the process. It's a Sonos process. If somebody is interested, he can take a look. Uh, layer references and every information from the foundry uh, is there. So this is a very significant step. And uh, for analog de uh, designs, you can see what kind of uh, layout and schematic uh, uh, tools you can use. Cadence is uh, the main software used in uh, ASIC design. Uh, it's very expensive, <laughs> so uh, the open source tools are uh, very beneficial in this case uh, because uh, you don't have to pay any fee to start your uh, with your design. Uh, all right, so 
the libraries and uh, we just have like uh, 20 minutes so I'll skip looking at the documentation and the PDK libraries at the moment if we have time uh, we'll come back later uh, another thing which is uh, really cool is that you can directly uh, speak with the uh, with the people who are responsible for this uh, Skywater PDK they have developed it they have uh, experience with the process and uh, if you have any issues with the tools or uh, the PDK you can go to this open source silicon slack.com and ask uh, the question there are around 4000 people doing all kinds of designs so what is a 130 nanometer process capable of? Uh, there is uh, an inspiration. Oh, uh, uh, they have an inspiration document, uh, which is a word document. Uh, I'm not sure how many pages, but uh, it's a process which is uh, was popular around 2000. Uh, and two, and uh, I, I just googled on Wikipedia about the 130 nanometers node. Uh, what kind of CPUs have been uh, created using this process? And we can see the first Xeon, Prestonia, and Gavatin have been uh, created using this technology. Pentium. Power PCs, uh, Mbrus, this is Russian technology, <laughs> microprocessor. So it's really cool uh, technology, although it's uh, old one. It's very, very interesting. Also, if you are more analog or RF designer, uh, and you have, of course, equipment, you can uh, uh, create uh, circuits operating at around 60 gigahertz very popular nowadays for the Wi-Fi technologies it's probably not going to be very efficient but uh, it will definitely work because of the uh, transit frequency of the transistors it's doable just you have to be a little bit more skillful uh, and experienced designer so uh, yeah, I have put some references here. Uh, the main tool used uh, to generate uh, uh, designs is uh, Open Road. Open Road, I think, it was sponsored by DARPA from U.S. government, and uh, it's uh, you are. It has uh, a Tico and Python binding, but uh, it's possible to generate uh, big uh, CPUs uh, consisting of uh, hundreds of thousand transistors. So you just need the logic and the gates, uh, the PDK. And Open Lane is extension to this uh, Open Road initiative where and the design is uh, where more open source tools are integrated into common environment. Uh, so, of course, Open Road, Yosis, Magic is a very popular layout tool also for integrated circuits design. NetGen is the LVS tool which checks. Uh, that your schematic and your layout matches. And uh, other useful scripts. So Open Lane is maintained by F. Ables, which uh, later on I'll show uh, that they actually fabricate uh, and make MPWs, multi-project wafers. And they have common uh, common uh, design where you can add your 
own design and they can send you three chips at the end for free uh, when they are fabricated. So the open source ADA, uh, probably the best way is to go to this opencircuitdesign.com and uh, using make files, uh, the structure is generated. I'm not going to go in details. Uh, this guy, uh, Timothy Edwards, is a um, uh, maintainer of the uh, of the magic tool, the layout uh, tool, and uh, on on his GitHub repository, you can go and uh, take a look how you can configure. This is the how it the magic tool looks like. Another very useful tool is K-Layout. Uh, it's used for uh, taking a look at the GDS files. Of course, open lane, as we have uh, said, it uses Yossi's project to generate or transfer the, uh, the Verilog or VHDL source code to logic gates and uh, uh, basically use the open PDK for, from Skyworks to create uh, designs. Xhim is a very useful schematic tool. Uh, it uses hierarchy and uh, uh, I really, really Do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Please. There's some noise. Anyways, let's uh, continue. We don't have much time. Uh, so, because I have uh, very interesting things to show, uh, these are some of the simulators which are used um, uh, for simulating uh, of the designs. Xis is uh, probably one of the best simulators uh, nowadays. It's open source and it's uh, developed by Sun. Uh, is it okay? Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, Sandia. Okay, uh, I'll just uh, continue. Uh, yeah, uh, if you are interested, uh, take a look at uh, sandia.gov. It's an uh, uh, organization which uh, is responsible for uh, US nuclear power plants, uh, their safety and uh, they have a uh, very nice simulator developed and it's open source. It can handle millions of transistors and use... Uh... Uh, yeah, so the digital standard cells, uh, probably you can read when you start the design how the 
what are the conventions. So you have the SKY 130, FD stands for foundry, and SC is a standard cell. And at the end, you have uh, high density, high speed, low power, high density, low, uh, low leakage, and stuff like that. It's interesting uh, that uh, you need different uh, type of transistors to achieve different goals. Of course, if you need high speed, you can't have uh, low leakage and such things. All right, uh, this is the common structure for the PDK. And uh, I want to go to the interesting part. Uh, Open RAM is an uh, initiative where, uh, you know, most of the CPUs uh, are basically uh, consist of big RAM structure and arith arithmetic logical units. And uh, these two websites are uh, very interesting because uh, the first one uh, is uh, creating a scripts where you can automatically generate uh, uh, stand from the standard cells uh, array of uh, SRAM uh, blocks like 64 bits and uh, more. And uh, the way the GDS is working is actually, the idea is to take single, uh, single cell and multiply it uh, in your design as much as possible. So it's similar to the coding where you have one variable and you want to use it as much as possible in your code. Very, uh, a lot of similarities uh, there are between the hardware design and the software, <laughs> actually. I'm also impressed. So there is a guy called Matthew Venn, which I usually watch his YouTube videos, and he have created a, a course called Zero to ASIC, the interesting thing is that he has never developed any circuits but started the course and he has already uh, two successful tape outs. And if you are interested, you can uh, sign for his course and uh, actually he can help you with the flow. This is the guy uh, on, on top with the headphones. The other guy here, he's called Propy and uh, he works for Google. Uh, he's also never have done any designs, but uh, what he did was, uh, is really amazing. Uh, he took the whole flow and put it on uh, Google Cloud Platform. So you can, instead of going and installing all the tools needed uh, for your design, you just can go to this uh, uh, call up uh, platform and uh, start designing the tools. And because he said he's not very familiar how to design chips, he decided uh, that uh, he can create a script which generates the, the, the design for himself. And uh, basically he provides some area and you can see how the initial layout looks like. It's very dense in the center. And after 10 or 12 hours of optimization, he gets uh, this output here, which is uh, much more spread. And, uh, and this is better for in terms of uh, temperatures and uh, speed, and it's much more optimized. So really amazing stuff is happening. Uh, another guy is uh, Theodor Dumitru Eni. I think he's uh, from Greece and he's doing his PhD. Why I think it's important? It's, because, uh, it's important because uh, he's working on the addition operation. So adding uh, is an operation, for example, in the RISC-V processors when it boots into Linux, 65 to 72% of the instructions use addition. Basically, all arithmetic op operations are built 
of additions, subtraction, uh, and so on. Multiplication is repeated addition, so is division. Incrementing the program counter is modified addition. Uh, also elementary functions like logarithm, sine, square root, exponents are performed using combination of lookup tables and additions. So in his document, he's, he have created a presentation where uh, he's uh, able to, actually this is a link to his YouTube video also, uh, he's able to optimize uh, the others so much that um, he's competing with the uh, tools which are uh, very expensive and uh, at the end he even succeeded to create another which are uh, faster and perform better than uh, any of the available uh, commercial tools. So he's doing this comparison. Uh, and he's even improving this <laughs> these designs. So let's have a look at the uh, Propis uh, call up and uh, also the other. Ooh, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, I basically it's a Jupyter notebook where you just uh, use the cells and uh, invoke the environment. Everything works in the background, and uh, uh, it takes some time to set up. Not much, probably less than a minute or two, but we don't have this time, so I'll just go. Uh, through the design. Uh, your uh, design goes basically into these few lines, right very log. It creates a simple inverter. And uh, you have to write the configuration which PDK to be used. And um, open lane is the the software which generates the output, which is a GDS, basically, file. You can see in the Jupyter notebook. And also some summary about the, oh, I just have two minutes more. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> but there were some uh, discrepancies during the presentation. So uh, I, uh, I'm really impressed uh, what these guys have done. Uh, if you are interested in the, in the others, uh, he's uh, going through the process very uh, efficiently in his presentation and also in his um, call up. You can see how he's optimizing the others. You have, of course, to know a lot about the digital design. I'm not so familiar, but it's really impressive. Uh, so, yeah, another tool which is very interesting and uh, probably going to uh, uh, to be very successful is one called Lib uh, LibR Eda. Uh, it uses Rust as a programming language and uh, also supports K layout and uh, place and route tools. Uh, so uh, it's very efficient also. I have said about the FABLES, the, they have open shuttle program, uh, which anyone can uh, join. And uh, basically, uh, your design can go in area up to 10 uh, square millimeters, around three by three millimeters, which is a huge chip, actually, <laughs> although it sounds uh, small. And what kind of projects uh, have been realized so far? There is a, a website or platform where you can look at the projects 
already taped out. Taped out. So there is an MPW number eight uh, multi-project wafer. But uh, if you look in the, into the details of these designs, it's something unique because um, you can speak with the people who are uh, responsible for these designs. You can ask them uh, details and even look at their designs and uh, why not optimize? There is an open FPGA initiative, a lot of RISC v um, processors, uh, open uh, uh, power, power PC because they have opened the uh, instruction set. So power PC is another very interesting. A lot of analog designs, band gaps, uh, analog to digital converters. So if you are interested in how things are um, working, you should definitely go to this uh, website and check uh, what these guys have uh, designed. Um, mostly the designs are on GitHub, so you can clone and take a look at them. Uh, all right, so what's coming next? Uh, oh, sorry. All right, so we don't have any time. Uh, so for conclusion, and Skywater's 90 nanometers is coming. Global Foundry's 180. I can't answer the question if open source is uh, going to take over the VOSI design, but it's a definitely good uh, uh, good way to start. And uh, of course, uh, logic will get you from A to B. Imagination will take you everywhere. And thank you for the time. <laughs> Sorry.